Oh my gosh, thousands of virtual people cheering all around the known car universe. Welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed, episode 400 live. My heart is beating, um, as I'm sure are the collective hearts of my co-presenters for the last 400 episodes or thereabouts. A huge welcome, please, for Sarah Leach, Zog. And Richard Porter! Hi guys, how are we? Ap Our 400th episode. I did, I did uh, some of the work, but uh, you guys did a lot of the heavy lifting. Richard, how fantastic it is to see you back with us. How you been, brother? whether you need it or not. Here with my own face on it and your faces and a little ticker. Down the side of lots of nice things happening. I uh, think doing, I doing think doing YouTube, I'm YouTube uh, on the other screen thing. Yeah, I think I may have missed your audio. I may I'm not certain that they uh, they heard any of your audio doing that exchange oh. for uh, people. I'm sorry about that. So, so he, was, he was swearing quite a lot. So it was a ah, there was a lot Some of swearing. the language was quite shocking. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. that's. Uh... Uh, I'm, I'm appalled, frankly. Um, yeah, we're here to celebrate 400 episodes of a really stupid idea of... Oh, you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay. Okay. Sorry, okay. I, I was... Uh... Responding um, to Richard Simon. Oh, everything's fixed now, um, apparently. This 400th episode of um, a really stupid idea of yours, Zogs, and Violet Berlin, who both said you should make a podcast, and it was your idea to do it about cars... And do it about um, uh, motorsport and call it Gareth Jones on Speed. You came up with that. What? 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 Right, what? Your, your, yeah, your recollection is, 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 is uh, slightly better than mine. Yeah, I, I really couldn't remember who came up with the title. I remember uh, us talking about the idea, and it seemed like you know a terrific thing to do. And 400 episodes in, yeah, it clearly was a terrific thing to do. It's, uh, uh, and I'm very glad that we've had. Uh, uh, Richard and Sarah along for the journey and 
Yeah, we're, we're, we're still going. What do you remember about the first show, the first recording, the first attempt to put it up? Do you remember any of that, Zog? Uh, I mean, I, I remember that we were we kind of were feeling our way a little bit with the uh, first uh, uh, first couple of episodes in particular, and um, uh, we you know we were trying to do a couple more sort of you know on location things at the time. We went to um, Silverstone, didn't we? Yeah, we went to Silverstone, uh, which was uh, you know which was uh, you know a good little report, but. Um, I think you know, you know, in in hindsight, you know, you know, good though that was, and uh, um, it uh, it wasn't until we, you know, got into the routine of the kind of chat, the kind of conversations that we have now that uh, you know we found the sweet spot. I think for uh, I, you know for our content. I absolutely agree. Which brings me to you, Richard. Because I remember on was it show three or show four where you joined the team, came over as a guest. And the idea was to do some research about you doing a Sniff Petrol podcast, but that went out the window, didn't it? Was it? I don't remember. I think... Um, I think that's right. Oh, yeah, you would... You would, you, you, would I, you would kick maybe, the idea around. And... I think you maybe. came by my office. That's right. In the BBC. At White Garrett, City, yeah. And I wasn't there. And you left me a note. Um, and the next day... Uh, some of my colleagues went um yeah you know that bloke off how to <laughs> or get fresh depending on how old they are yeah um this is probably pre-a1gp maybe it wasn't and uh he's been by and he's it, left you a note and i was i think we maybe spoken once on email and then did we we met i think at the a1 grand prix that's race. right yeah i i actually came into the bbc for a meeting with um top gear at the time and uh, I won't go into what that was all about. But as I walked past a monitor, it had Sniff Petrol as the uh, screensaver on the monitor. And I said, oh, I love Sniff Petrol, I just said out loud as I walked past. And uh, they said, oh, well, the guy runs a, that website, Richard Porter, that's his desk, which is why I left a note. And yeah, then we met up at the first A1 GP race of them all, which would have been, what, uh, August? No, September uh 2005 at brands hatch and um we discussed you coming on the show and uh you were thinking about doing a podcast and when i went through the whole process of recording editing mixing publishing writing the rss feed working all that out from first principles because no one else was doing it at the time uh these days it's just you know i plug in on WordPress and boom, off you go, you're a podcaster. It was very different then. And I think I frightened you off about the amount of work involved. And so you agreed to do a sort of a wizard and chips thing. Uh, and that combines Sniff Petrol and Gareth Jones on speed. If you look at the logo behind me, um, let me just go to the webcam so you can see that. Hang on a second. Uh, how do I do that? I do that and I do that. Uh, you know, that, that logo with Sniff Petrol slapped on like a, a plaster as a sort of an adjunct to Gareth Jones on speed. It's like Wizard and Chips, the comics, when they combined, I always think. And you're right, it was at that point that things... Um, whoops, wrong button screen. No, that's the wrong screen, isn't it? That's <laughs> webcam the, and screen two. Yeah, I'll get there eventually. Web, Stand by. Webcam and screen two. I don't I don't remember what I remember is that when we started doing it we sat down and then one week you went you know what this might be better if we stood up I think maybe you'd bought a new microphone stand or something we should stand up couldn't it work out how to lower energy it. yeah it was jammed in the up position so we had to stand up and um and that that's all I can remember but that's the yeah, other those early ones we sat down uh, we sat it, it, down we drank quite a lot, I think, or certainly I did. And I used to smoke as well. And basically, we used to do short bits of speaking and then stop so I could have a cigarette and refill my glass. And then, yeah, because I, I was Edmund Slackbladder even back then. So, uh, and it's only got worse because I'm middle aged now, right, guys? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. how many times are you getting up in the middle of the night? <laughs> 
Uh, I know, I'm, I'm a bit of a, uh, what do you call it, a hijacker, late starter. I don't feel as though I've got, um, well, nowhere near as many runs on the board, that's for sure. Certainly wasn't there at the beginning. Do you remember the circumstances in which we first met? And... Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, that weirdo at the hospital club. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an actual hospital club. It's a club called the Hospital Club. We were, we were the there at a, a media networking oh, sure, opportunity. Yeah it, a, yeah, it was a media networking thing. It was a um, uh, the executive producer from was the Graham Norton show, and then they had some people from Top Gear there, and I just went along because I was in the area for work. And um, yeah, I remember I remember running into you and chatting, and I think I just worked on the Formula E then. So uh, yeah, we got chatting. Yes. I got the impression straight away because you were there and you were talking about cars and you were talking about Formula E even then. I thought that that that, that you, this could be a real asset to our program. <laughs> we need some fresh blood. And we got you in because it's always difficult to get all four of us or certainly in those days, at least the three of us together in one room. And I, I re reasoned that we needed a, a bit of an expanded lineup just in case well, one of us could on, make Gareth, it. Gareth, can mm. I, since on this, this uh, occasion, can I tell people one of the reasons it was often difficult to get you, Zog and me to find a date where we could all meet up to record is because, and this only occurred to us belatedly, you only ever use a Slade 1973 calendar. <laughs> and without fail, and I promise I'm not making this up or exaggerating, without fail, every single time, Gareth would go, OK, we all good to meet on Tuesday the 19th. And one of us, Zog or I, would go, Gareth, Tuesday is the 20th? Oh, right. What did I mean then? Monday, the, the, are you in 1973 again? Yeah, yeah, I think I might yeah, be. This, so, <laughs> it was forever quite confusing. And we worked out eventually it was because of the Slade 1973 calendar, which, of course, hasn't got all the dates <laughs> of, say, 2010 on it. It'll be, uh, was, it'll be correct again. in the about the fact that I so often uh, was playing poker on Monday night. Uh, so uh, there, was, there was quite often a, uh, uh, a poker podcasting clash being set up. Well, that was your uh, first podcast. Your poker podcast was how you pioneered the idea and said you should be doing this because you're doing uh, yeah, that before yeah, I, I was on doing speed. A poker podcast a couple of years before that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, Britain. Yeah, it was the first. Actually, it was. It, it wasn't the first online poker podcast. But I think it was the first UK online poker podcast. Why am I not surprised? Um, you pioneer. Yeah. Great show. Cool. All right. Well, um, I think we ought to have a bit of a roll call, guys. I'm just going to uh, uh, do this for a moment and do that uh, because I want to say hello to the many people who have joined us this evening. And I'm going to read down the list. Just a, a roll call of, oh, so many people. Forgive me if I repeat your name or... Uh, or, or, or know, mispronounce sir? it, but hello, John Burquist, hello, Paddock720, hello, Doug Hall, James Minshew, Jonathan Gitlin, Jonathan in the States, uh, that's fantastic, Chris O'Brien, Rocking Kitten in the Netherlands, Paddock720, James Cadwell, um, BA55 BAR, we know who that is, uh, Rocking Kitten again, uh, The Rushton, uh, Verse Andy, Senna Trowell, James Cadwell again, The Rushton, Bike Shed Digital Media, my friend John Coombs, uh, Cleland Fan 81, oh, we should talk about that, shouldn't we? We should talk about the BTCC of the past. Uh, oh, it looks like Alex is there. Hey, Alex. Uh, Alex, Alex, Alex Guy, um, uh, James, James Cadwell, we mentioned. Jennings, there he is, Robert Jennings, yes. Um, Tito fan, Dave Stebbings in the house. Oh, Alex hey, Goy, we see Ultra you. Ultra listener. I, <laughs> hang on, hang on. We should go to Richard for that. Hang on. Let, hang on, Richard. Wait for it. Go do that again. Hang on. Yeah. Ultra listener. <laughs> Thank you very much. Beautifully done. Uh, Violet yeah, Berlin, who's actually acting as executive uh, broadcaster uh, uh, and uh, or advisor on the darkened couch in the other side of the room. Uh, I can see that you're on there. Fast as Funk. That's a great name. We love that. Fun. Yeah, Dave Stebbings. Oh, um, okay. That's everyone for the moment. Let's, uh, hello team, uh, Doug Hall, Alex, go, yeah, yeah, okay, I think that's, that's everyone, it's not everyone, but it's many of the people for the moment. Now, I'm sure you guys 
watching in YouTube land uh, have things to ask about uh, the program. Don't be shy. Whatever it is, even if it's not about making the program, if it's about cars or motorsport or things that you know we like or better hate, ask us those. It's going to take about 30 seconds for the uh, messages to filter through because that's the delay time between me broadcasting and you receiving and it coming back to me. So uh, let me get back to uh, the gang. Gang, um, why do we gang. still do Gareth Jones on speed? Because we love it. Didn't, you broke up. What was the question? Why do we still do Gareth Jones on speed? What that keeps us going? Well, well I, I don't. I took the summer off. So. Is, is that a rhetorical <laughs> question? <laughs> no, it's, I really enjoy being a part of it. It's great. And uh, your enthusiasm, Gareth, is infectious. So um, I've loved being part of it. It's good. And um, I've enjoyed you know, keeping up to speed. It's helped me keep up to speed. Um, with all the motorsport and stuff. So, yeah, See what I you did there. sometimes I add value, sometimes I don't. <laughs> with a great advantage of doing Gareth Jones on Speed is I have to watch the races live on Sundays because yeah. now it's work. <laughs> That's yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a way, you know, I, I, I said just, you know, you know, but briefly we love it, but I guess in, in more detail, you know, to expand on that, you know, it, it, it's a way to engage with, you know, a culture, a thing that, you know, we, we love, watching and participating in in various ways when we get a chance um and it's a way you know we it, it uh you know gives us a, a, a kind of a you know a, kind of forces us to you know engage with each other's ideas about this and uh you know uh, uh kind of make a bit more of our of our enthusiasms um of our, of, you know one of the things that we're we care about and we're passionate about um, I've always said that sniff uh, that that uh, spitting image is the model for the program because I made a documentary about spitting image in about 1987 or something for children's ITV. I spent a few days with them making the program, and I realised that they shot most of the sketches in the program sort of in advance over a week, and then on the day of transmission they recorded a very short pre-show gag that was topical and another one for the middle of the show and something near the end. So it made the whole show seem as if it's topical. And of course they finished with a ridiculous song. And that's exactly what we do with Gareth Jones on speed. You know, we, we, we do our chat and then we write the topical gags and put them in at the last minute and I'm then sorry, finish with a ridiculous just, uh, song. The, the song, are you drinking champagne? Um, <laughs> it, well, it's a, it, 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 it's a, it's not actually champagne. It's a, a cremant de Bourgogne. It's a it's a it's French bubbly, made in the same <laughs> method as champagne, but not in the champagne region. If you want to get technical, it's, but, uh, it's but a yes, little known fact that, that um, Zog is the uh, is very much the the, the most bling <laughs> of anyway, okay. We we got some questions. We've got some questions. Says, says the man who's driving a newer Porsche. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to have that. Uh, I'm, um, I'm not going to have that. that. Guys, uh, I've got a question for you. Um, I'm seeing there's like loads of questions coming through. Yeah, I've <laughs> lost it now. Yeah. Someone asking, uh, forgive me, but I can't find the name. Can you hear Finn yeah, the cat? Uh, you're going to have to wrestle. You're going to have to wrangle the questions, Gareth, because uh, yeah, on she... my screen the text is a little bit small. Yeah. I understand uh, so how that works. To, uh, the um, I've lost the question who it was from, but I can tell you what the question is. Um, Sarah, we'll start with you on this because it's vaguely okay. in your department. Ex I think I know the thing. Extreme A quick fire question. That's that it, question? yeah. I read that. I read that. You spotted it. Can you see who it was from? Uh, Extreme E. No, what, what, what's your I thought on Extreme E so it's, far? I think, it's, well, I think it's great so far because it's, isn't, don't they team up as a female male partnership? So there's quite a few female drivers that have been signed up for it. And I think it's great. And they're going to go around and compete in different cities that are, um, I don't know, you know, in accordance with, you know, good things for the globe, I suppose. Um, I think the locations that – I'm not an expert. I haven't read up on it in detail. But I know what it's, what it's about, and I think it's, I think it's really good. So – and particularly the cars. Are they – I mean, you, Richard, you might be a bit more of an expert than me on this. Um, the cars that they're using for Extreme E, uh, you know, they're not quite rally cars, but they're sort of, you know, all-weather sort of rough terrain vehicles, aren't they? And Lewis Hamilton is going to be involved, so that's very exciting. And you've also got um, 
uh, Jamie Chadwick and quite a few other prolific sort of female drivers that are up and coming also involved. So I think it will be a really great series and um, I think it will bring something different to the fore in the motorsport world. So that's my little take on it and I think it's definitely a good thing. And obviously, um, you know, electric cars and so it'll be good to see how those go in the terrain and the rough sort of or the extreme um i guess terrain yeah terrain exactly or temperatures or you know all the different yeah yeah Uh, zoggy so what's the question again do you Uh, like extreme extreme exciting interesting what do you think yeah i I think it'll be a bit interesting um uh yeah you know as with any you know new direction in motorsport you know i want to see how it works out i want to see uh what it'll be like uh, in in practice. I think um, on the sort of reliability and you know uh, uh, on the reliability uh, side of things, um, uh, I guess you've got these kind of competing things. Of on the one hand, there are fewer things to go wrong with you know electrical systems than internal combustion engine systems, broadly speaking. Uh, fewer moving parts. Uh, um, but then you've got much less mature technology and much less experience in running these vehicles and running these vehicles under those conditions. Is it um, more interesting than Formula E? Um, Possibly. Uh, I think, in a way, yeah. Because I mean, one thing that I, I have to be honest, I've struggled a little bit to to get into Formula E as much as I might have liked, partly because of the sound you know the mm-hmm. uh yeah uh the, the cars are a bit too quiet and the you know the sound of the vehicles is you know is often a big part of the appeal um yeah at least with extreme e you've got things crashing and banging and you know <laughs> there's there's a bit more making noise there uh, richard so um, if the noise yeah. taking no noise to the desert flying around the world to look after the world it's a <laughs> slight uh, mixed message isn't it I, yeah, but they're supposed to be doing us on that enormous ecological boat, aren't they? So I don't know. I mean, yeah, if you wanted to really help, then just stay home. And keep quiet. <laughs> but, well, apparently, uh, um, you know, don't staying boil at the home throughout. Throughout. There's too much water in it. That saves electricity. Um, but, what were you sorry, saying, Sarah, about staying at home? Oh, I was just saying during COVID, while this lockdown happened, it did great for the, uh, you know, global climate. Um, <laughs> Stay at home. You know, all the, you know, it's better for the planet. Yeah, less carbon emissions. Yeah, emissions are that. dropping all over. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted Richard. Were you uh, I, don't have a, I don't have a lot to say about it. I just, it's kind of intriguing, isn't it? It's interesting that Hamilton's got a team in there. And I know um, uh, my old colleague from Top Gear USA, Tanner Faust, is doing the shakedown stuff on those cars. And, um, was uh, is he? Yeah. saying good things about them on uh, social not... media today, but then he would do because he's been paid to, <laughs> paid to shake down the car. But but you know he knows what he's doing, and so hopefully you know he'll find uh, good um, goodness within it. But I yeah I don't know about the whole going. You know, I, I would just it, look if you're going to do it, do it. Don't don't try and claim eco credentials for it that maybe are questionable. And also I you know if I'm honest, don't go to Saudi Arabia if you can't <laughs> <Yeah>. claim virtuous. <laughs> Uh, unless well, you uh, you like the idea of um, a country that dismembers its own citizens inside an embassy, but uh, yeah, that's just me. Maybe I'm being picky. Yeah, but, 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 I mean, to, 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 to slightly push back against uh, at least the first part of what you're saying, um, I think you know it is a at least they're you know engaging with the challenge of how you uh, put on how you how you do actually still run any kind of motorsports in the massively changing environment that we have um mm. in, in that you know there isn't a long-term future for uh internal combustion engine cars um so if you're going to think about the future of racing things um you've got to think about you know racing things other than the things that we're mostly racing at the moment so, so this uh, is a yeah, this yeah. is a problem no, for no, me no, because this is a problem for me because we've always uh, built the show. We, we initially build the show as the podcast for petrol heads. Now, we, Absolutely, we, which we, we still are. We, we are, are still petrol heads, but we are equally interested in alternative power uh, systems, you might say. So if anyone out there can think of a name for the show, you know, a, a strap line for the show that replaces podcast for petrol heads, some alliteration, something that, 
you know, covers all cars. I'd love to know. Here's a question from uh, Jonathan Gitlin, uh, who is um, the man responsible for planting the idea that Zog and I should attempt to drive from Land's End to John O'Groats for Gareth Jones on speed in a Hyundai Kona electric. <laughs> we'll come to that in a minute. But John I had a, well, yeah. Yeah. Jonathan's Sorry. question. Hold that thought, Zog. Don't lose it. Um, Jonathan's question is this. Um, uh, <laughs> Favourite... LMP H, LMP one H cars of the cars which race in the top category at Le Mans. Briefly, you got a favourite? Which one and why? Zog. Oh, easily the uh, the Porsche nine one nine. I mean, I think it's possibly. Um, I mean, we had a fantastic era there. I think we were we were privileged to see that particular era of endurance racing when. Toyota, Porsche, Audi, Peugeot were all going at it with very different vehicles. And, you know, all credit to, you know, uh, to the ACO for, you know, for, for coming up with the kind of regulations that enabled different manufacturers to come in with their very different technologies and compete, uh, you know, on an even, you know, you know on an even footing. Yep. We've got some amazing racing out of it. Um, and it uh, won it in its second attempt, wasn't it? Or was it the first yeah, attempt? Second, it was second attempt. No, yeah. it didn't win. It didn't, didn't win first time out. Mm. Uh, but yeah, second time out it won, and it then you know gave, you know, extended, you know, obviously you know, Porsche had come back into the top line of endurance sports car racing in order mm. to uh, basically in order to prevent Audi from stealing their crown of most wins at Le Mans, mm -hmm. which uh, which mm -hmm. Audi would you know, undoubtedly have gone on, well, would surely have gone on to do. Um, and uh, and with the three wins that the 919 uh, achieved, you know, Porsche, you know, kept their, you know, kept their lead at the top of that particular table. And it was just, you know, particularly as the company proved when, after they retired the car, they did that kind of, you know, sort of victory lap of victory tour of circuits and set, you know, new record times at the Nürburgring at Spa. That was the 919 um, Evolution, wasn't it? That's that was the 919 Evo, yeah, yeah, because, I mean, but what they essentially did, obviously, the, the 919 that we saw racing and winning at Le Mans was uh, a spectacular piece of, uh, and very complicated piece of racing machinery that was designed to work within a particular set of rules. Yeah. Um, what they did with the 919 Evo to, to set the record times at, uh, at those circuits uh, was to, you know, kind of, you know... Trim it off. Uh, yeah, re remove some of the limits. It was the, the club sports impose. version, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was the, you know, you know, no one's telling us we can't, uh, you know, turn this up to 11, take yeah. this restriction off. To, you know, uh, I can't really remember all the detail of just exactly what they did, but, you know, it's, you know, throughout the car, I think everything through, you know, from electrical things and not running some extra electrical systems. and, um, But, you know, they just to unleash the full potential of that, of that vehicle. Okay. Um, Richard. And, and, you know, if you've never seen the onboard lap of, the 919 Evo at the Nürbur setting its North record time at the Nürburgring, you've got to watch that because it's just, I mean, it's just insane. You know, you really, you watch that and you, you think, well, I mean, first of all, you know, how, how on earth did, you know, how on earth did someone manage to put that lap in? And, you know, you just think, you know, surely that can never be better. Okay. Sure it will be. So thank you, Richard. You got a favorite LMP1H? Uh, same as Zog, I think. Really? Sorry. Really? Yeah, I just, I thought, yeah, it was it, it was really good. I quite liked it. It was intriguing, some of the engineering in it. And yeah, as Zog says, when they took the stopper out of the bottle, it was insane. I mean, it's, it's just incredible what it could do. It was almost unreal, I think, when you watch some of that um, some of that footage of it going around. Over a thousand Nürburgring. horsepower with its combined uh, uh, delivery yeah, system. Yeah, I'd say yeah, it must be easily. I would have thought. I mean, yeah, because they could just you know they could they could cut loose. And I noticed like they sort of I think they blanked off the headlights and stuff like that. I guess just to smooth out the yeah. fronty kind of things. It was yeah, it was really tricksy. And um, yeah, I just like the way it looked as well. I mean, I don't think any of those new generation cars are sort of pretty pretty, are they? They're not XJR nine pretty, but they're they're 
kind of striking and and I quite like the way the Porsche looked in that respect. So um, yeah, same for me, I'm afraid. Sarah, um, I know you're not really uh, as lost in Le Mans as we are. You've never actually been there, but well, I I, well, I, I, I can talk about winning car though. Can I? Of course you can. But it may not be. Well, well, what I will say is the car of interest to me at the moment because I am actually working on something that has given me enlightenment to this particular vehicle, and it's the winning car of the 1995 Le Mans, um, LMGT1. Oh, yeah. And it was the McLaren, McLaren 95. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's now like a legendary supercar. So it's a very good-looking car, number 59. Um and I think that will go down as one of the all-time greatest uh, sort of supercar sports cars. It was the last vehicles. car. GTR. It was the yeah. last road-going car to win Le Mans outright, yeah. wasn't it? Extraordinary. And achievement. also, yeah, absolutely. And also significant for being. I mean, they always say you never win Le Mans in your first attempt. McLaren won Le Mans yeah, in yeah, first yeah. attempt. And I, I am actually quite a fan of Le Mans. Oh, sorry, I'm a fan of McLaren in general. So, um, so it was. Um, it, and the the finishing driver that drove it over the uh, checkered or through the checkered flag was JJ Yannick Dal Dalmas. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Yannick Dalmas. Yeah. So um, I've got that yeah, car. Anyways, I've, you, I've got a, I've got that model of that car uh, not on the shelf behind me because I'm rotating it, but I've got it somewhere. Um, um, yeah. Um, I, 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 okay. Well, stay there. The BMW engine actually the same. Uh, Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, 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 it's an absolutely you know, right. legendary car, and it's uh, uh, also, I mean, if I recall, also one of the unusual examples of um, a, a vehicle where the road car was actually faster than the race car because, because they have the, to throttle uh, it back for the race. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and also because also, also I think because of the aero that the uh, that the race car had that uh, made it a little ah, bit draggy. That well, isn't my favourite, even though it's won three times now. The Toyota TS050, not TS050, TS050. Uh, my favourite hybrid car was actually the Audi R... Was it called the 18? I've lost track now. TD, R18 TD. Um, yeah. uh, because it was the first time I'd seen a hybrid diesel car. But it wasn't seeing it that was the most exciting thing about it. It was hearing it at Le Mans at night. Um, either when we were at our friend Bertrand's farm, right on the corner of Indianapolis, cars go past, they go, yeah, brum, brum. Then the Audi T18, T, Audi R18 TD, whatever it was, went past. You heard vortices leaving the uh, the rear wing. You you heard the turbo. And it was, it was, it was, it was like a science fiction car. It went as it went past. Very little sound from the diesel engine. To, you know, you couldn't hear the diesel for the aero. So that's my favourite LM uh, P1 H car of all time because the sound it made. Uh, but one of my favourite Le Mans cars of all time isn't isn't an LMP1. It's this. It's the uh, Chrysler or Dodge. That won't focus, will it? The Chrysler or Dodge uh, Viper from about uh, 95, is it? Who was it? It was uh, uh, Dupe, Dupe, Wendlinger and Oliver Beretta. Uh, 2000, year 2000. And it, I, that car looks like it could have been designed any time in the last 50 years, from like 1958 to 2000 or something like that, 2010. And that's what I love about that car. It makes it ridiculously crude reliable big wonderful Le Mans car right mm. okay um, thank you for your questions we'll take more questions in the moment I think you know the gang's all here largely right you know we've got the the four of us here but there are lots of people who've been involved in this program over the years who aren't with us in person but they're here in message form Happy 400th episode, Gareth Jones on Speed. Like, that's an enormous number of podcasts and, well, some quite frankly incredible amount of waffle. Well done to you all. And you asked me to, to kind of reminisce and think about some favourite uh, memories. Uh, being on the, the, the celebration show, the live show, that was pretty cool, as was being Mistake for Zog outside the venue. That's always special mm. because it's nice to know that apparently 
all shortish bald blokes with glasses look the same. We're all, we're all identical, apparently. Um, makes us all feel special. Um, as far as other favourite memories go, I think uh, it's, it's got to be going to Le Mans and going to the Guinness tent, getting decently lashed up and meeting people and talking to people and having lots of big hugs and being very excited about what was going on and really soaking up the atmosphere of what's going on around us. It, it always feels kind of, kind of magical. There's a great community spirit which you get only really with podcasts and with, and with things that have that have got a great community and a, and a huge amount of love surrounding them and that's that's really special to me um, and that, that's that's what I, I really enjoy doing also coming over to Gareth's house drinking far too much and falling over uh, that's always a giggle and being Janine uh, Elon Musk's uh, secretary she's, she's got a special place in my heart um, so yeah, congratulations guys, congratulations on 400 episodes, um, thank you so much for letting me be a tiny part of it, um, just being able to listen to something like that over the years has, has been super special, but being able to, to come on and be a part and have a natter about cars and racing cars and how much I dislike Lewis Hamilton and Formula One, it's been really cool. So thank you very much and uh, congratulations once again. Hi, Sam Bradshaw here. I'm talking to you about an audio podcast, so it doesn't matter if I'm wearing a mask, you won't see me, or will you? Anyway, I understand that Gareth Jones is 400 years old. No, no, I've got it wrong. 400 editions, episodes of the great Gareth Jones on Speed. That's what it's all about. Amazing man, lovely man, great podcast. Mm -hmm. I wish you all the best of luck for the next 400, and... Um, whether you're on speed or off speed, you're still one of my favourites. Lots of love, and uh, keep up the good work for the next 400. Oh, Anne Bradshaw and Alex Goy, two of the loveliest people uh, in the world of cars and motorsport we know. Anne Bradshaw, who, as you know, was PR for... Damon Hill, Ayrton Senna, Nigel Mansell, the Williams team, and of course, uh, Lance Stroll. Did you know, by the way, that uh, I, I nicked this off yesterday's um, pop bitch email, if people know that sort of music and entertainment industry gossip email and uh, it's very good on there yesterday which but I double checked it and looked it up they they pointed out that in Reading there is an Ayrton Senna road because Ayrton Senna used to live in a suburb of Reading called Tilehurst in the early 80s when he was relatively unknown and so in 1995 when he died or after he died they uh, they named a new street after him it's a dead end and it has speed bumps on it, which I think is a little disappointing, but um, <laughs> they didn't stop there. They're obviously so proud of the fact that Ayrton Senna, not from Reading, obviously, but because <laughs> he lived in Reading for a couple of years, he's got a road named after him and there's the Ayrton Senna Children's Playground. And moreover, there <laughs> is um, a town centre named after him in Scotland, Air Town Centre. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's true. You're breaking up. You're breaking up. Shut yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have, take another question. Uh, somebody asked, favourite car books. Have you got a favourite car book? I remember, I started off, I remember reading a book called uh, Bob, Project Bobcat when I was about 17, I think, when uh, the first oh, Fiesta wow. came out. It was the story of the development of the Ford Fiesta. God, I loved hey. that book. Yeah? What? what? Oh, well. R Richard's. No, it's going to be one of Richard's Really? <laughs> what? How to Become a Formula One Driver. Is that the, that's, that's, my that's a very book. good book, by the way, How to Become a Formula One Driver. What, Richard? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's, called, it's called Let's, Let's call, call It Fiesta. Fiesta yeah. The, the autobiography of, uh, of uh, Ford's project, Bobcat. Wow. So it was, a, it was basically a big PR job. It was written by a journalist who was given permission to, um, to follow the development of that car. Well, I'm very proud of this copy. It was given to me by uh, a friend of mine uh, who actually Sarah discovers that Sarah is working with at the moment. Uh, and my friend, Big John, gave me this for my birthday 
and he got it from a second hand place and look it's it was originally bought Ooh. by British Leyland for internal use for that, some reason that's the provenance you love more so than anything Richard Porter that I I enjoy but yeah this is quite an interesting book it's not as interesting as bear with me I'm gonna to have to disconnect for a okay second. yeah I, I liked it because they showed the um uh, the concepts of the other rivals to the Fiesta design, and one of them was based on the uh, escort, shortened escort chassis. It was called Brenda. That's what I remember from reading that book. I don't think it was a shortened escort because the escort was rear-wheel drive at that point. The Fiesta was brand new and front-wheel drive. They, they were talking about a, a shortened uh, rear-wheel drive car as one of the possible alternatives. Ah, and Brenda right, was. Yeah. It was one that was turned down for the... Uh, no, Brenda was the Mark II or Mark III, Mark II Escort. They used to name the oh, um, forgive me. Fords after, they used to give them code names based on women in the engineering office typing pool, I think. So there was Brenda and um, I can't remember, Sierra had one as well. And there was, I think there was a Monica at one point. They were, just, they were just women who worked in the office and they were guys. They didn't have a Janine. Oh. That's the voice yeah. that Alex Guy does for the show. Janine, she didn't work there. <laughs> right, that's it. Yeah. So um, you read any books recently, car books? Not recently, but I don't think I'm as well read as you guys, but I have read a couple of motorsport books. I have read uh, Richard's um, How to Become a Formula One Driver. That's quite a good read. Um, <laughs> I've read, I've read um, Damon Hill's um, autobiography uh, a little bit. I've read another book about Ross Braun, interestingly enough. So I know his, um, his influence on the, you know, the sport. So a few sort of geeky books like that, but I, I can't say that I've, I'm as widely read as reading about a fiesta. So, um, well, but, you know, before you jump into the fiesta a good book, book, Sarah, can I recommend yeah. Metro, the book of the car by Ooh. Graham Robson? It's, it's a yeah. rifle fiesta. Is Riveting, it? which has got a lot of. Uh, Does it have books. a happy ending, though, Richard? Well, I suppose technically not. I mean, within the confines of the book, it does, but we all know how the story actually ended. It has got some quite good stories in it, like how. Um, uh, they call a load of the prototypes were lost because there was a fire one night in the tunnels underneath the uh, long bridge that um, uh, they used to build aircraft parts in during the war. Yeah. So these sort of air raid tunnels and they just used them in the seventies for storing cars in and they stored some prototypes down there and a fire broke out and they realized there was a fire down there because the uh, floor in the office upstairs suddenly got very hot. <laughs> it's so, a bit of a giveaway. Um, yeah. So it has got some quite good stories in it. Um, the, the old Metro book. Um, I noticed someone on the comments, a couple of people said that I've missed an open goal by not promoting my own new book. Um, Sarah did it for you. Oh, no, your new book, which is uh, volume two, is it? Uh, no, so a medium-sized book of boring car trivia is my current book. But yes, volume two will be out quite soon. Very good. Soonish. By popular demand. Well, yeah, if you're after another, uh, if you're after a good motion book to read, Sarah, I would recommend, I mean, I would recommend. Yeah, any recommendations uh, for well, you, okay. for your value. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, um, I just had to uh, remind myself what the, the title of the book, but uh, Life at the Limit. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Sid Watkins' autobi autobiography, basically. He was a sort of, he was Formula One's resident doctor for many years. Um, oh, yeah. Was, um, you know, he, he, he was one of the people that kind quite, he was quite instrumental in, you know, in bringing the sport on in terms of safety. Yeah, um, I know. That I, just... I did watch a film about that. Is he American? Uh, no, he's no. a Brit. But, um, okay, maybe not. Uh, Wrong guy. Um, uh, and he's, um, uh, but it's a, you know... It's Look, Zog, you're that, looking yeah. at that book, that very yeah. book... Professor Sid Watkins' Life at the Limit, which is yeah. currently being used to stand the tripod on that the webcam that is shooting me <laughs> now, otherwise I would have held it up on screen. Yeah, I mean, he changed Formula One, helped it become safe enough to become a bankable uh, uh, PR opportunity for multinationals. You know, he was uh, one and, of and, the... and, 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 and he writes very movingly and very, uh, you know, with a lot of insight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about you know various episodes yeah. uh, in the sport, and you know he's a he's a good storyteller, and he was you know there at the front line in, you know uh, I mean there's a, there's a tremendous account in particular of you know I remember you know of him being driven you know from the track to the airport by Gilles Villeneuve on one occasion, and mm -hmm. you know Gilles Villeneuve was never known for you know you know was could be a bit of a. Uh, uh, Bit of a maniac on the road, yes. particularly in a higher car that he, you know, <laughs> didn't care about. 
And uh, you know, he, I mean, he mentioned that at the, at, at the start of the drive, uh, uh, Gilles' wife was was with them. And at the start of the journey, before they even went to before they even set off, uh, Mrs. Villeneuve who was in the back of the car, just got on the floor of the car and kind of nestled herself securely somewhere where she wasn't going to be sort of, you know, bumped around too much and where she was going to be nice and safe. And he said, and, you know, she was, uh, she, she did this almost every time, apparently. But yeah, it's, it's a really good, uh, it's a great read uh, and, uh, and a great insight into that period of Formula One. Um, guys, yeah. um, I, I just looked on the shelves here in my office to try and find the definitive uh car related book that we yep. should all read and in fact i imagine most people have read it probably several times memorized it perhaps treated it as some kind of holy text and of course it's this uh, oh British motorways. God. Uh, it's the old <laughs> testicle that is isn't by, it uh, by Charles. i'm rereading it at the moment <laughs> i've no idea why i've got <laughs> it i haven't actually read it i think i might have got it off ebay to research it's something one but... really the building yeah, of... one really just in track. it used to be a um a like an air airplane um, landing in the war, didn't it? Which one of them was that? What, 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 right. I missed the first part of that, Sarah. What? Well, one of the racing uh, famous look. I'm look. I'm not British, so I can be able to, to talk without knowledge on this. But there, one of the racing tracks. Maybe it was Brands Hatch or Silverstone itself. It used to be a um, yeah. Silverstone be, uh, was an yeah, air force uh, base. Yeah. A, a yeah. And then you, you, oh yeah, well, yeah. yeah water airfield. That's the one. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Quite but, many uh, of them uh, were. Uh, because that's yeah. what they did when the war was over. They just turned this large, these large spaces into somewhere that you could race cars. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, big areas, lots it. of lots of tarmac, uh, lots of you know long straight things, and all of a sudden you didn't need to land fleets of fighters and bombers on them anymore. So why Someone not? Someone in the comments has actually come up with a sensible suggestion, which I would uh, agree with Adrian Newey's book. Oh yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's really good. Adrian um, by Builders of Munich. Yeah, Munich. yeah. Cool um, I only read books with, about people called D Hill, Dave Hill from Slade, and um, <laughs> uh, Damon Hill, of course. Um, uh, actually, this is the book I was going to mention. Uh, Steve Matchett or Ma Mr. Mache, um, oh, yeah, the that's, Chariot that's Makers, which uh, was a glorious book I read a long time ago, and actually inspired a song in Gareth Jones on Speed. Uh, a uh, song that Anna Marie sang for us in the style of Amy Winehouse called Back to Black. Uh, the song, our song, Back to Black, was all about the use of carbon fibre. And I remember learning from this book how you lay on multiple layers of carbon fibre at, at almost like a spiral angle to each other uh, to create something strong in every possible direction. Great book, The Chariot Makers by Steve Maché. Steve Matchett. Maché. You, you have to read the book to know why it's Maché. All right. Um, OK, thank you. Good questions. Uh, should we have some more messages? I'm looking at the time. Um, I said this would be an hour long. I have a feeling it's going to be an hour and a half. Let's see how that goes. But uh, let's have some more messages, I think, from uh, from people who uh, connected to the programme or fans of the programme who aren't with us in person. Hello there from a sunny but not very tidy recording studio here in Real. I'd just like to wish happy birthday to uh, Gareth Jones on Speed and indeed all the lunatics and participants who've made that wonderful podcast come to life. Uh, I'm actually one of them uh, and indeed I help Gareth on uh, various musical matters. Um, it's very rarely a, a week or two goes by before I get an email from Gareth to say, can you just help me with this piece of music? Uh, I need a verse or a chorus or the mix isn't quite right or something like that. And what I tend to do is go, eh, it's pretty good, but maybe we just tweak this and this and this, and it's okay. Um, so yes, it's been uh, quite a pleasure. I've known Gareth for a very, very long time, uh, over 10 years, well over 10 years. Uh, I suppose the highlight for me would be to say that the live gig, um, gosh, I don't know when that was now, up in Islington with uh, an all-star band, which was absolutely great fun and Again, chaos, but it doesn't matter because it is wonderful to, to be on that stage with all those people and see all you guys in the room. So, as I say, happy birthday, Gareth. Happy birthday, Gareth Jones on speed. Let's have a uh, cheeky drink soon and also toast the next 400 episodes. Hello, Gareth. Cropley here. I gather it's 400 episodes for you of your remarkably fine podcast. 
I can hardly believe it's a tremendous achievement. Well done. Um, the thing that I remember best about you and your podcast was running into you for the first time in 2008 at Le Mans. And I don't remember what the hell happened at Le Mans. I think it's something Peugeot, but I really couldn't tell you. But I remember being deeply pissed off that it was over because you went home and so did I. And, and uh, we were no longer knocking around together. It was a great episode, mate, and I, I gather, I'm sure you've made a hell of a lot of people happy before and since. So I hope it goes well, and uh, many congratulations, and uh, we'll be thinking about you. Best wishes. See ya. Gareth Jones loves me! Oh, when people like Steve Cropley like your show... It makes your heart pitter-patter a little bit faster. Uh, Richard, you were there. We were there at Le Mans together in 2008 with Steve Cropley. That was the year, Which that, year the, was the that the Peugeot year that we slept on the floor of the Peugeot hospitality unit. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I missed that year, I'm afraid. Yeah. Could Sorry. Went, would you like oh, no. to get into a, an agreeable people carrier and be driven down the road to the agreeable house where you could have a bed? And 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 you and me both went. Nah, we'll stay up. We're hardcore. We will stay up and watch the racing. So we stayed up because we went. Oh, we'll go into that. We had we were allowed into that hospitality thing, weren't we? We had we free went, champagne for twenty four hours. There. Yeah, some sofas <laughs> and there's some bean bags, and we'll go in there and we'll kip down. It'll be fine. Went in there. Of course, lots of other people had already had the same idea. And then I forgot that you're an ex roadie and you can sleep literally anywhere, like <laughs> standing up or in a cup. <laughs> that or something. actually you happened went, oh, once. I'm going to kip down here. And you just went behind a big table and lay on the floor and went to sleep. And I was like, I can't do that. Wow, there's no way I could do that. I've, I've never been a roadie. So actually I actually got a picture of you sure. lying on the floor uh, on my oh, computer. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'll share it no, somewhere. I think I'm sleeping. I think I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. But um, I think I just got up and. But then we did go back to the chateau for the uh, the wind down after the race and went out for dinner. I think no, on I was Sunday evening as well. Oh no, you went back, did you? I had to go home, so I had to. Yeah. I was like, I suddenly was like, that. You, you, have you ever been on a French exchange when you were at school and you got separated from the group? It felt like that because I had to make my way across Paris on my own with a, a horrible sort of possibly still drunk, possibly getting a hangover kind of feeling. <laughs> so I was the Eurostar. And I, I, it, was, it was too much for my brain to take on board on like an hour's sleep tops. And I, it was, yeah, I got all a bit disorientated on the Paris Metro. And Peugeot well, didn't win that cheap. year. And we, we travelled there with them. We flew in on a light plane from uh, Farnborough, didn't we? And uh, they didn't win that year, much to their disappointment. But got to hang out with um, Steve Cropley, who mentions it in his column. Look, there's me in auto car. This week's, today's auto car, Steve Cropley, page 15. That's the one with the new BMW 1 Series on the front. Uh, 2 Series, what is that now? I've lost track. 128, 128 Ti? Yeah. Um, he, he writes about being at Le Mans with us and uh, promoted this lovely show. What a lovely man. Thank you, Steve Cropley. Thank you. Yeah, Hang on, know. Violet is laughing her socks off just over here. I have to find out what's going on. I don't know if she can tell me. I'm just going to go to webcam for a minute. Where's my webcam? Oh, Hang on, stand by. She's, she's writing in the comments, I what think. What are you saying, v? It's because uh, Mason Brown sent her message in the comments saying yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me get the, the gang up for that. Uh, Richard, like Violet just saying, late round was written. That was a very half hearted bloody hell, Richard. Yeah, I just saw. And now I can't do a real one because my children are sleeping down below me. So, <laughs> right. um, a problem I imagine Patrick had uh, commonly had when his children were small. But yeah, I don't want to wake my kids up. And, and really, you can't do it. Uh, half volume it just doesn't work so um bloody hell i don't know i'll post you one <laughs> I, I, I just like to say that i'd quite like to know whether the and go. what are you saying zog yeah. I, i'd just like to uh say that i'd quite like to know whether in uh uh steve allen jones um uh message. video message whether yeah. that was a, a, a an original korg ms20 in the background uh or whether it's the the more recent um, three quarter scale controller uh, for the Korg uh, vintage collection of 
uh, of, of analog models since. I don't know I if Steve is with I us live right now, but if he's on the comments, he can let us know the answer to that. If not, I'll ask him. But, and just referring back to uh, uh, Alex's message, I'm glad that you mentioned the Guinness tent uh, at Le Mans. I mean, we've you know discussed a few Le Mans things uh, on this show so far, but yeah, I think he's uh, yeah, very good times were had uh, in that uh, Guinness tent. I, I think um, I think your Korgs. I think Korg, Moog, and N-Sonic should get into the electric car business, shouldn't they? They should make cars. You could have the, the Moog, and then the smaller one would be, of course, the Mini Moog, wouldn't it? They make well, I, if you want to put money on, it, on any electronic music manufacturers being involved in the uh, electric car business, my money will be on Kurtzweil being the ones most likely to have a connection. Because Maybe the organs. Uh, no, um, Ray Kurtzweil. I mean, uh, Ray Kurtzweil. Um, they they started out mainly doing uh, some, some very good uh, digital pianos um, using. That would make a great sports car. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is that Ray Kurtzweil, It was kind of a spin-off of work that Ray Kurtzweil was doing on artificial intelligence. The whole music technology thing was very much a side gig for him right. uh, and he's still a very big you know a, a very big cheese in the in the world of artificial what intelligence. you're saying zog is it's that these cars not, would be self-driving uh yeah i'm, I'm I, I would it wouldn't I, I mean i really don't know but it would not surprise me at all if something that ray kurtzweil had worked on uh was in some way finding its way into autonomous car technology yeah yeah sarah what are your favorite brands if you're gonna wear a brand what what do you you know put your money on i've got nike socks you know i like slade that's my brand i'm trying to think of what brand would be a good brand to manufacture cars i'd definitely buy a moog or a or a korg or a, a boss or something like that or even a tonka toy that'd make a great car wouldn't it sarah what's your favorite brands have you got any favorite brands any brand allegiance <laughs> well, I, well any brand allegiance that doesn't necessarily have to be a manufacturer or existing manufacturer that could actually maybe turn into a manufacturer like a ysl or a chanel is that what you're chanel yeah yeah yeah, a non, yeah. A non-car brand just non-car you know brand. i think chanel might do all right it'd get a lot of sales in yeah. china that's for sure yeah good point i drive mm. a chanel five didn't, didn't... Has there ever been a tie between Chanel and a French car manufacturer? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some, Mm. at some point, there'd been a Chanel. The Citroën DS Chanel. I think they did. I think they did a tie up with uh, with Fiat for the 500, did they? Or am I thinking of somebody else? I mean, Carl Lagerfeld probably did a fashion show around cars. Someone in the comments will tell us. I suspect any time now. Um, I hope so because I can't check. Yeah, I would drive a Gucci. I a Gucci. 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 It was Gucci. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Gucci <laughs> did a link with the Fiat 500. Really? There was a 500 Gucci. Yes, yes, yes. Got a ring to it. Very good. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, somebody was asking about the music. Yeah, I saw that comment. Yeah, who was it? Was asking about the music. Nia Khan, I think, was asking about the music that we make for the program, uh, which leads me to our, our next thing. Um, uh, I've written a song. I, <laughs> I've written loads of songs, over 160 songs for Gareth Jones' feed, all about cars over the 400 episodes. 160 songs, that's 10 albums or something. And I've written a special song for this episode and uh, shot a video for it because we can't just sit here and look at you, you've got to have something to look at. And this was a song that was inspired by uh, my time in America last year. I spent eight weeks in America on tour with The Alarm and had two days off. And one of those days off, I went to the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California. I made uh, two or three episodes of Gareth Jones on Speed, augmented video epi- uh, still, uh, audio episodes with stills, you know. And uh, and that car inspired a song. Um, uh, and and I, I recorded it uh, having been to see uh, Griff Rees. Uh, you know Griff Rees from Super Furry Animals? And Super Furry Animals yeah. and Neon Neon. Yeah, exactly. And he's so fine, he's fine man. He's got provenance as far as uh, songs about cars are concerned. So his song, in the style of Griff Rees' solo work for Gareth Jones on Speed, it's called Science Fiction Cars. <laughs> Shh. 
I don't know what happened there. It suddenly died on me. That's weird. Let's let's try and ring that again. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, uh, I completely lost the... Uh, the f oh, here it is. It's, it's, it's live TV. This yeah. is, these things happen. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> let's try that again. She said, I don't like the metro, not even the six up. Me, I, you go to stars and I can't just look to the floor. I like the Something? I, it, there, uh, there is a problem with the media it link. At the same point. Yeah, I'm going to have to re-import that media. Um, uh, sorry about that, guys. I'm going to play this song yeah. in, in in its fullest form. In the meantime, um, let's ask another question. Uh, while, while you guys answer the question, while I'm doing the media wrangling, okay? Um, let's have a look. Um, while you're doing that, I'm just going to just a quick mention that I'm. I mean, I'm. I was constantly knocked out by Gareth's extraordinary work uh, ability to write and <laughs> record, turn and turn around a complete number. Um, you know, because uh, I do, you know, some music on the show, but uh, at a massively slower rate um, <laughs> yes. than, than Gareth. I think Gareth simply doesn't have the you know, doesn't have the patience to wait for me to you know finish this up the stuff that i'm obsessing over you know and in, in the time that i'm you know figuring out how this chorus is going to work or you know you know getting the production of these eight bars right he does a complete song <laughs> in the style of a particular artist you know nailing that style uh and it, it you know it really is uh, you know gareth you know it really is very very impressive and i'm you know i'm sure uh i'm sure Steve Allen Jones would say the same, you know. Well, thank uh, you. It, it's uh, you have quite a talent. I, it's, uh, very, uh, it, it's very impressive. <laughs> She said, I don't like the metro, not even the six up. Only I go to stars and I can't just look to the floor. I like the sun. Not sure you want to spend um, too much time troubleshooting. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, Gareth, if I was your executive producer, I would tell you to move on to the next item. Yeah, I think there's only so much time. Richard, Richard yeah. there's, a good, there's a good question for Richard here. Richard, why did you used to call Seb Vettel Mr. Bendy? <laughs> I saw that. I um, dicking around. There was no story behind it. The, the I think um, it was because he, in his younger days, used to look quite sort of fresh-faced and smiley, like a kids' TV presenter. Um, oh, I see. Just tried to think yeah. of a sort of silly like CBB's name for him, but it was purely that. But then people started asking why, and so rather than say it's because I think he looks like a kids' TV presenter, and that would be a, <laughs> a name for a fictional TV presenter. I I kept pretending that I couldn't tell people 
and that seemed to make them a lot more interested in it. Um, and then, you know, once something like that gains momentum, then you've got, you can't give in, but that was years ago. So yeah, it was just, it was just mucking around and because he was a bit like a kid's TV presenter. And then the sheer bloody minded sport of um, not telling people the real answer just because I'm a dick and I should have just admitted it. So anyway, there we go. yeah, why? Because he was like a kid's TV presenter and then I... I think I fixed the audio. Let's try a third time. If this doesn't work, I'm going to kill it. But bear with me. She said, I don't like the metro, not even the six up. I the stars and that cows just stuck to the floor. I like sandwiches, sandwiches, There is something very wrong in the world of technology tonight that won't play that, and it's played it all the way through so many times earlier on today. Never mind, I will post it as a separate file. You can have that as a YouTube thing. But I wanted to see, I want you to see there's a whole bunch of car gags later on in that, and I wanted to, to play them now. But hey, if it ain't going to happen, it ain't going to happen. But yes, the, the, the outfit is the one of the girls from UFO, the Jerry Anderson series. Um, on Moonbase, they had purple wigs and they wore silver, so I was her. Because it's because I better explain. Zog's just reading a message from Helen Hooker, who we met when we were driving Mercedes around uh, Goodwood many, many, many years ago, and hanging out with um, uh, South African world champion uh, racing driver who drove uh, the odd uh, six-wheeled. Uh, thank you, Jody Schichter. Hanging out with Jody. We had lunch with Jody Schechter and his Christian beef farm. That was it. That was a different that was a different farmer of a Christian beef farmer. It's all really, you know, really very very fun. Uh, I I got some I had some of his uh um some of his wild boar, which was delicious. Um, yeah, I, to be honest, I'm a, I'm a little bit skeptical about the biodynamic thing, but you know, I'm not. But hey, the, but the man knows his stuff, and he's making you know fantastic food, uh, um, producing fantastic stuff down on that farm. Uh, I'm just reading uh, the the questions from people. Let me say hello to some people who I haven't said hello to yet. James Minchu, I have. Um, uh, uh, yeah, oh, sorry I, about my, my sound is silent. Uh, yeah, that was me. That was uh, that was because I, long story, but I had to mute you to play the video, and that had okay. a knock-on effect. Uh, it, it, it's a technology fighting us. Um, should we have um, the final messages? We got some more messages from people. Let's hope this doesn't uh, uh, quit uh, two thirds of the way through the uh, the playback. But uh, once again, here's some uh, messages from people who, in some ways, are connected to this program. How I gain. Many congratulations for reaching 400 episodes. To put it in perspective, when you first started 15 years ago, Alonso was on course for a world title with Renault, and Lando Norris was only five years old. Some might say, bloody hell! Hi Gareth, mm. Tom, Richard, Sarah, congratulations on 400 shows. It's an amazing achievement, and I'm sure you're looking forward to making the next 400, as we all are to listen to them, I'm sure. And congratulations to uh, Violet, Sons 1 and 2, and Finn, because I know it's a whiz family. But, um, best bit for me? Oh, easy. It was the uh, 10th anniversary bash in London, which was one of, the, one of the most bizarre and entertaining nights out I've ever had, um, especially with the, uh, <laughs> the hilarious uh, showing up of... Uh, 
Hello, I'm Lumsden Bumhat off of the F1, and congratulations on 400 episodes of Gareth Jones on Speed. When you record the show, it's very nice. You go to Gareth's house, there's pizza, there's beer, there's ice cream, and there's intervention from the cats as well. And hopefully we can do it again in future if it wasn't just for this bastard virus. See you soon. Bye. Lumsden, actual bum hat. Richard. Yeah. I have two questions. Yeah. Why did he get ice cream? I've never been on <laughs> ice cream. I was wondering, yeah, I was going to say. I oh, know, I thought that too, actually. Gonna, <laughs> that weird, yeah, Sarah, ever get ice cream around it, Gareth? I can see this, no, is, this is going to become a major point of contention now. Oh, he's I... off the telly. You can have some ice cream. Ted Secret likes his puddings. Cream. We're on to you. Um, second question is, Alex, are those your real curtains or did you put them up just for that video? I kind of need to know. They're great curtains. Uh, I remember, do you remember when yeah, we the, did... Um... Thanks for the message, Alex and uh, Dave. It's great Thank you for the message, right. you. And, Do you yeah. remember it was episode 200 where we did a sort of a video stream via something else called Ustream or something? And I set up a little backdrop here that was originally a checkerboard thing like uh, um, Alex O'Dell had there. And it was too detailed, so I changed it to a black thing. And Richard, you observed like we, we looked like some illicit terrorist organization. Three of us sitting in front of a table with a black backdrop. Should have had people there with guns behind us. It, it's out there. It's still out there. Um, episode 200, a video episode of Gareth Jones on Speed. So how about that? We do video episodes, live video, while every 200 shows. That's a reason to keep going, isn't it? Yeah, there's some miles there. I'll put it in my diary. Yeah, yeah. Well, who knows how, how many oh, more they're going to be? Hang on. What? This just in. Um, Alex says those are my real curtains. My mum made them some twenty-five years ago. Your wow. mum's fab. <laughs> wow. I, I think checkered flag curtains could be problematic though, because the black parts obviously very good at keeping the room dark on summer mornings, but the white parts, oof. No, you're going to need you, a lining you, on there. I hope your mum put a lining. Yeah, you need a good lining on the background, and you'd have a decent blackout. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure if Alex's mum is cool enough to make those curtains, I'm sure she's cool enough to have given them a good, uh, a good black outlining. Yeah. Stylistic <laughs> yeah. thing. Would you have checkerboard as a pattern on the fabric of the seats of your car? I like tartan the way or plaid the way that they used to do it in the Gulf. Would you have uh, what, what? What would be your perfect interior, guys? Would it be checkerboard? Would it be tartan? What? What? What would you choose, Zog? No, those are both far too no, but but way too patterned, way too uh, too loud. Like I I prefer something much more muted. I want you know I want I, I want a fair. I... Zog Zog Zog, mate. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have got live. It's a developing story. This really. Um, Alex's uh, curtains have a dark blue lining. <laughs> there you go. So, there you go. So there we can all that's but yeah, on the uh, I, I I like I think I think the generally a fairly muted. I mean, you know, the, the color is going to depend on the on the vehicle. But generally, I think I want a flat color, probably something quite muted, uh, uh, and I want Alcantara or leather. Um, Richard, generally. favorite I'll... interior. Um, we see, I do quite like those check seats that you got in Porsches in the seventies and early eighties. Yeah. Pasha, the, the fabric was called. And it's a very, right. it's a fine check, and it's very nice. Um, I just saw somebody in the comments mention uh, used for some reason used the phrase seats covered in Sir Jackie Stewart's trues, and um, racing that, Stewart. Well, it's quite a good way of describing um, uh, the interior of the Volkswagen Up GTI. Yeah, which yeah. Is, uh, a car that I really like, so um, black, white, and red, isn't it? Yeah, sort of yeah. black and red kind of tartan. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, but Jackie Jackie Stewart's got two tartans. He's got his own, which he had on his helmet, which is Stewart, and they created one for the Stewart um, F1 team, racing Stewart, which is rather nice. I wouldn't mind a pair of trues. I need a couch in that for myself to wear. Quite enjoy that, Sarah. What would you um, what, interior of your car? What would it be? I would just be the modern day leather seats, heated heated seats. Heated. <laughs> I so it's the Australian the, girl um, in the winter in Britain. You're correct. going for comfort, correct. practicality, comfort, over practicality, style. Correct. Absolutely. Although, you know, I think I would probably be comfortable with a retro look just for a little while. And 
Retro. Um, again, sorry, I've got, I've got another little update on Go something on. I said before. I, Violet has dived into the comments and pointed out that we have had lollies round at your house before, and that is I true. Brought, I, brought, I brought along popcorn Happy. one. But under the you articles of Poudon, I oh, think you will find lollies don't technically count as pudding. An well, ice cream does, I, but a I lolly doesn't. A, I think we were offered a choice, and there yeah. were there were different types of lollies. So yeah, I'm happy to set the record straight. We have had freezer products at your house, so maybe <laughs> ice, that's, but, ice, but ice, I've, I've, ice, ice cream. Ice cream, ice cream is better than lollies generally. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I don't mean to sound in any way ungrateful for the lollies, which were which were delicious. They were delicious. Yeah, but. You know, but, but I, get, I ice just cream get this feeling that, that you know that, that Bumhout was taken into a secret room and given some like Ben and Jerry's or something because he's a celebrity. That's, he's that's special. Just Not like us. He's special. Can't get past thinking that's what happened. Um, can't so, even get Sarah to eat one slice of pizza when you come round, Sarah. <laughs> oh, I've eaten a slice of pizza before. Don't blaspheme. <laughs> <laughs> I've eaten pizza just um, not all the time. I um, brought on popcorn once. Um, let's talk about you. You bring great popcorn. Um, let's talk about the program. Let's talk about um, uh, any favourite moments or or stuff that that uh, counts. What's the first thing that comes to mind, Sarah, for you when you describe well, remember, the process um, of making the show? I remember at our Christmas party, um, we you gave me a virtual gift of a Daniel Ricardo hoodie. Wasn't it? Wasn't it a yeah, hoodie with right. Daniel Ricardo yeah. all over it? Yeah. So, so <laughs> I mean, that, that that's one moment. And I do remember, actually, um, quite impressed with uh, Richard's uh, script writing skills and the Doctor's... The, is it, was, it was the Doctor Who episode, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the same one. I enjoyed that. Yeah. And, I, and I did my best Scottish accent. <laughs> it was very good. It was very good. Yeah, the Doctor Who episode, Richard, was... Uh, that was our most ambitious piece of uh, comedy. It was something like 25 minutes long. It was a whole half yeah. hour sort of um spiraled out of control <laughs> <laughs> didn't it yes like the time really vortex like sketch based around doctor who make it a bit longer uh sorry yeah it's 25 minutes good forgot no, no. yeah well, that was good I, I i liked that i thought that was one of our, our yeah that was um, quite good my favourite bit in that... Was it, it was Hamilton was travelling in time, wasn't he? That's right, yeah, with the Doctor. Yeah, the that, Doctor that played by Jackie really. Stewart. Yeah. One of my favourite <laughs> moments in that sketch is where the Doctor, Jackie Stewart the Doctor, of course, um, takes Lewis Hamilton into his TARDIS, not a TARDIS, which was a blue portaloo. And you hear, it's, there's the audio of them at the racetrack, and they go inside, and it all becomes very muted suddenly. And that was one of my favourite moments of audio production ever, where I managed to crush the audio to make it sound. And then they transition through to the large part of the TARDIS, which, of course, it's bigger on the inside than the outside, and you get a bit of reverb. And uh, uh, that was my favourite bit in that sketch, just because... yeah. I, you, know, you paint the pictures of what's actually happening with, with sound because it's an audio podcast. And that was our first requisite, wasn't it? The, the sounds that you don't hear in Formula One. Do you remember in the very first episode, we recorded the sounds of tyres going over the kerbs at Silverstone. And if I remember, they'd increased the pressure on the tyres that year. And so the tyres were now more rigid and more resonant. And when they went over the uh, the kerbs, they, they sort of rang and that was one of the things that we've done over the years in, on speed. Yeah, we, we've captured those sounds, the sounds of cars at Le Mans, the sounds of the electric and hydrogen fuel cell cars that we've driven and the startup sounds. And, it, and, and that sound of going into the TARDIS, you know, it's, it's great to be able to work in, in audio. Um, uh, you got favourite sketches, Zog, Richard? Uh, well, I just, I just, it's just if I can, one favourite, uh, I mean, I think uh, my favourite sketches would, uh, you know, almost any of the of the Patrick Head sketches or or the Flav sketches. Uh, Ross Brown. Uh, uh, oh, Ross uh, Brown. Ross Brown. Yeah, yeah, but although they're not quite as. But I think same thing. Flav, think Flav and Patrick Head maybe hey. for me but on, on the comedy ladder. But you mentioned the Doctor Who sketch and the um, which was that that was uh, uh, tremendous writing. But it's also having you know talked a little bit about the music earlier. Um, uh the 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 music that i did for the start of that the uh the the the, the doctor who the music fake doctor yeah. who theme music uh the the not quite copyright busting yeah. sort of copy of the doctor who theme music um it is my favorite bit of uh the music 
production that I've done for the show. Um, because it was it was really it was a lot of fun to get into reproducing you know that particular you know kind of you know iconic bit of electronic music history it was Delia Derbyshire. Um, you did well. Uh, you know, groundbreaking bit of TV music, um, and and I was you know I, uh, yeah no, I, I'm glad you say that because it, it uh, I was very happy with the way it turned out and it was. Um, um, uh, yeah, so, so that was a that, that that that's Zog. That was a personal sort of uh, high point. But on, we, on, yeah, we've got um, a ZZ Top song on the way. You and me. That we was do, written yeah. uh, written as we drove back from Scotland in an electric car. Okay. Um, I'm sure you've got um, something in mind. I I know I've got a Eurovision song that I've written with Steve Allen Jones, which is actually first appeared in the uh, Doctor Who sketch. It's been fleshed out into a whole Eurovision song about the the sounds that Maestros and Montegos made. Really, um, are you got any tunes you want to do? What what what's 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 working up in your uh, musical department? Well, I've, got a, I've got a Blondie number on the back burner at the moment. Um, Is that Friday um, Boy? Uh, I, I wrote no, a song called it, Friday it, Boy. It, 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 it doesn't it doesn't have a it doesn't have a title because it doesn't have uh, 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 there, well there's no lyrics there's no title it's just you know it, it it's the Blondie number. Um, we'll get Melissa to sing that then. And, and there's another uh, another Kraftwerk number on the way. Oh, um, great Kraftwerk to back. So uh, we've got Wolfsburg. Yeah, but, yeah the Wolfsburg uh, song is yet to come. Richard, are the pet the pit stop boys going to reform? Uh, no, <laughs> I think they're probably resting at the moment um, on account of them having two small children and lots of other things to do. <laughs> so, um, don't never seem to have the the time anymore it's um I, I was thinking about this and i was like it's funny because we used to um sort of work into the middle of the night making this show didn't we in in sort of younger days um because we would sort of do the main recording and then then write some sketches and then perform the sketches but then sometimes there'd be sort of extra bits that we need doing and because i remember once we did a I mean, it sort of seems very sad now in, in light of what's happened, but we did the sketch about the Schumacher sort of at home with Michael and Ralph, I think. That's and right, then, yeah. And I think I said, oh, we should do, this could do with some sort of oompa music on it. And the next thing, we're, so we, we wrote and performed a, a whole song, a little little theme song for the Schumacher sketch that sort of had this oompa beat, and the, the, I can't remember how it went, the words, but um, I think we did a Jensen Button one as well. And we like, did one called Definitely. That's it. And then he won a race. We were like, he's hopeless. Yeah. He can't do anything right. And the next week he ran a race. And we Richard, we've, the whole thing again. we've got to but... rewrite the Jensen Button song because these days Jensen Button doesn't say definitely anymore. He says emotional and special. You watch. Next time Jensen Button is on Sky's F1 coverage, the number of times he says emotional and special, oh, that was a really emotional moment. It was a very really special moment. Constantly, it's his default setting. So he's moved on from definitely. I can do a good button uh, right now, as much as I've, I've I've been in brainstorms all day and I've been talking a lot and I've got a bit of a cold, so I can do a nice sort of cl slightly claggy throat like Jensen does. Uh, it's emotional. It's very special. Uh, um, <laughs> very good. Very good. Yeah. I um, yeah. No, I, it's funny because we did used to stay up till like three a.m. just making yeah sketches and stuff like that and 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 recording those Pits of the Boys songs which I sang on and. Um, yeah, well, there's no time for that anymore because I'm permanently tired. So, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> the pit stop boys are resting. Well, uh, we'll, we'll welcome them back at, at some point. I'm going to attempt uh, one more uh, attempt at uh, the sci at the sci-fi car uh, song. Because Gareth, in, as your yes. executive producer, I've told you to leave it. All right. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm not Viewership's optimistic. Viewership's going to go down. It, it, it stopped at the either. same point. Three All right. It, it, okay. Well, in that, I, well, I've 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 just reimported another fresh version of it, so we'll see. But in the meantime, uh, my my uh, one of my no, favourite sketches. Just, I, I, I just someone uh, Chris O'Brien in the comments has said Richard going on a long trip to tell Jackie Stewart to shut up is another favourite moment. Well remembered. Remember yes. That at all. What yeah. happened there? Yeah. And if I remember that, it it it, it, it was. Uh, 
uh, yeah, you, you heard him. Heard, Richard said, excuse me a minute. You went out the door. We heard you leave the door, get start a car, drove. There was music. You arrive at Heathrow. You hear, bing, bong, get me off the floor, fly to me. And you flew all, we heard plane taking off, plane landing, another car. Uh, take me to uh, Stuart, uh, Jackie Stewart's house, please. And you arrive at the, the distant bagpipes. The door opens. Jackie Stewart, you knock on the door. Do, do, do. Uh, hello. And you say, oh, Jackie, shut up. That was the sketch, as I remember. Really? And it spilled oh. over into After the Titles, if I remember as well. I only spent... I, I remember that because I spent five days editing it. Yeah, they did. God. Uh, I must have been during the drinking times because I don't remember that at all. <laughs> maybe... maybe you're, well, I've maybe, lost sketches. Maybe yeah. we'll do uh, a kind of a, a best of. We'll get you guys to vote. If there are any moments that you remember in particular over uh, the 400 episodes of Gareth Jones on Speed, uh, send us an email to onspeed at garethjones.tv or leave it in the message comment here and we'll do a kind of greatest hits show as part of the 400th episode celebrations. We'll dig out some of the uh, more ridiculous sketches. Any moments that you that remember one. that we don't. Yes. <laughs> I can't. I feel like I... an old person in a home having some photos from their childhood brought to them. Do you remember this? No. Have you taken your pills? Yes. Right. I was saying my favourite sketch. Sorry, I distorted there. My favourite sketch over the years. Uh, we've animated. Um, I created some pictures. John Coombs created some pictures. And Zog animated them in a brilliantly. Uh, Makeshift fashion. I love this sock. This is great. But this is my favourite. the word. Yeah, one of my favourite sketches. Arguably my favourite sketch ever from On Speed because it deals with a, 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 a car nuance, which I won't give away, and also Richard's James Bond voice. <laughs> An underground car park, Em. I had you down for more salubrious circumstances. Less of the lip, Bond. This is your final warning. I'm giving you one last chance to capture Malbec before I give this assignment to another agent. Relax, Em. I've got this perfectly under control. So you say, 007. Now, get out of here. Good night, Em. Bond! Bo Bond! Bond, that's the new Mondeo. Your Aston's over there. Oh, bugger. I love that because of your Roger Moore voice. Cause it actually sounds like the real Bond to my ears. Who can, no one can do Daniel Craig. Can you do Daniel Craig? <laughs> Richard, we have to write the sketch for the Christmas show of all our favourite impressions. So we're going to have Roger Moore. We've got to have Flav. We've got to have Patrick Head. We've got to have uh, the two Norwegian Volvo uh, engineers. Uh, I'm sure. And Jackie Stewart. Hey, would you like another dram of whiskey, perhaps? Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm, I am I have to mute the video in order to stop that hell round thing. Sorry, sorry. I was saying we should do a, a, a Christmas show, a sketch, Richard, um, with all our favourite voices in it. Flav, Patrick Head, or Roger Moore. And um, uh, who else could we have? Uh, Jackie Stewart, of course, with a wee dram of, of whiskey. I, I fixed the mute. Violet just telling me now. We should do that for the I, Christmas I, show. I, I, I think that's what you would call in sketch writing a card before sort of sketch. <laughs> but um, yes, one to put on the uh, on the on the list. What was that? Oh, are we? Ah, okay. You were Sorry, muted. I, was, I fixed it. We were muted. Ah, yeah, it was my I fault. Saw someone go stop pissing about with the mute button. I was like, who are they talking to? <laughs> yes, you, yes, I it's, think it's like something just, I would just, say to my children. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, well, well, what people might have missed was uh, uh, I think it's just discussing how very how very spot on Richard's Roger Moore 
uh, impersonation was and uh, uh, Richard talking about how it uh, helps a little bit to be breathing in while you're doing the Roger Moore voice. Go on, do it again, Richard. Go yeah. on, go on. I can't, yeah, I, I'm trying to... Now I think if it's like it's like walking. If you think too hard about it, you can't do it anymore. Or is that just me? Um, so, <laughs> Roger, you sort of breathe in as you're speaking and it somehow seems to come out like that it's all in the back of the throat but i can't I, I, i've got a sore throat so i'm better at jensen button than i am at roger moore i think weirdly roger moore clearly never had a um sore throat when he was james bond roger moore can't run actually that's speaking of not being able to walk um have, have we done that story on the on the podcast before roger moore can't run if you watch any of his movies he never runs in them invisible sort of open ground because he can't run and really? when he started yeah he started doing uh it was the first one living let die and he said to the director i i they said okay this next shot you're just gonna run across here and he went no you don't understand i can't run he can ski backwards but he can't run how does he that ski work? backwards <laughs> off a cliff union flag parachute yeah. all that but yeah he can't run so that's a bit of the airfield when he he, he drives the light aircraft through the hangar and knocks the wings off it's all that sequence. Yeah, yeah. but if you watch he runs across open ground but he doesn't there's a luggage trolley in the way to hide him because apparently he he has the most extraordinarily uncoordinated running style it's not very 007 so um, so when so you, you say know, he can't he, run it's not that he, he just he's not good at running. he just he looks terrible when he's like, uh, yeah he also of... flinches when he fires guns so they always had to try and cut around that Still my uh, favourite Bond. I'm not having a go at the bloke. He's brilliant, yeah. but uh, yeah, he he there, he wasn't necessarily sort of naturally made to be 007. I'm trying to work and yet out somehow which... he worked out so well. There are two well. two Bonds nearest to me, and I can't work out which is the nearest to me. Is it um, Timothy Dalton from Colwyn Bay, or is it Daniel Craig who was born in Chester? Because I'm from Hollywood, which is almost exactly halfway between those two places. Perhaps nearer Chester than Colwyn Bay. Is Daniel Craig therefore my favourite Bond? He might be. No, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. He had the car, didn't he? Um, Sean Connery. But I've 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 got a bit of a soft spot for um, uh, George for Lazenby. George Lazenby. Of course yeah, you have. On a Majesty's Secret Service, uh, which is uh, a uh, tremendous, a tremendous film. Who, who was the Australian um, Bond, wasn't he, um, Sarah? George Lazenby, who I, was the third Bond. Yeah, he, was, uh, he, uh, he was Australian, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, um, Spartacus Mills asked, did the James Allen story involve incorrect yacht attire? Did I tell that story on the show? Uh, it, uh, no, it didn't involve me going to a party on a yacht. And when, I, when we got off the little barge that took us there, the first person I saw on board this big yacht was James Allen who, of course, I waged a campaign against to try and get him taken off my TV's Formula 1 coverage back in the day. So that was a bit embarrassing. I had to spend the rest of the <laughs> avoiding it. But there was, a, there was a clothing mishap as well because they made you take your shoes off on board this yacht because it had lots of very expensive carpet and it was for sale. And when I did, I realised I got a big hole in one of my socks and I was trying to rotate my socks so the hole was on the underneath and I was busted by the then boss of Aston Martin, Andy Palmer, who um, laughed at me for having shit socks on an expensive <laughs> yacht? So it was a brilliant evening all round. Really, um, it... but you know, you're at a party on an expensive yacht. You know, how bad can it really be? You know, it's uh... yeah, I know. I mean, that, I, 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 I apologise for that entire story because it's got a massive clang in the middle of it that I was just glossing over. I happened to be on a yacht. I was in Monte Carlo as well. So occupational uh, hazard. Um, well, of course, it was. Um, last question for the evening, I think. Uh, this one from Fastest Funk. Has any of you ever bumped a press car? And if so, how did you explain it to the press office? Uh, I have two stories re relating to this. Sarah, you haven't had a press car. Um, no. When was the but last? I'm sure I would. I'm sure I'd give it a good go. Did you? Um, did you bump cars? Did you were involved in an accident in Australia when you drove there? Uh, no, I uh, I was a very good driver. Well, I still am a very good driver. Um, I see a lot of speeding fines. Very good at getting speeding tickets. It's a qualification for being <laughs> on this program, of course. Yeah, 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 there you go. Um, I had a couple of accidents when I first started driving, but that's a bit of an inexperience, isn't it? Just the general sort of bumper to bumper stuff. But overall, I'd like to rate still myself here. a fairly good <laughs> so we've here, never bumped a car here. and a press well, shoot together, have fine. we? I don't think. Uh, I, I haven't. No, I've. Um, uh, I haven't done as many uh, press car miles as as you or Richard, but uh, but generally, I've uh, no, I, I've managed to avoid contact with 
road furniture with other vehicles. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly pleased with my press vehicle record. I do recall at least one occasion uh, when you were behind the wheel, Gareth, when I was quite glad. I was very glad that the vehicle had uh, an automatic crash avoidance system. <laughs> uh, I was which, making sure it works. You did inadvertently test. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm sure deliberately. I'm, I'm of sure course, deliberately. Was, uh, in any way, uh, 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 an unplanned event. But um, uh, yeah, the, the, the vehicle wasn't damaged. But but we did get a demonstration of its um, ability automatic to braking ability. Yeah. Richard, you, you've never written a press car off, have you? Uh, yeah, I I did. I rolled an Audi TT. I never knew which I've probably oh, about is early on. Yes, that's right. And uh, have I ever? No, uh, no, nothing heroically stupid apart from the Audi. I, I have I I scuffed the side of a Skoda once and then i you just uh, did that for the alliterative quality of it you yeah the side of a so of a skoda and then someone drove into the back of me in a mini and um uh yeah but nothing like nothing kind of you know good job it wasn't an iq not not um of the magnitude of some people i know but it's not my place to tell tales on other car writers so <laughs> i uh, um I, I have sort of code of silence on yeah, where is things going on. Bit. I mean, yeah, I had a... two incidents. Um, I had a van. Um, is it the Vito, the Mercedes Vito? Uh, and we were on a camping trip in in South Wales, and it had been raining. Of course, we were camping. It was raining and raining and raining and raining for days. And we we're going down this narrow um, track, really. And uh, I hadn't noticed quite how narrow it is and how wide this vehicle was and how soft the verge was. And I was just tending to the left and suddenly it went clung. Oh, right, now I'm at uh, nearly 40 degrees here. And the door's on that side. How do we get out? We, we dropped into the gully alongside the, uh, uh, the, the road. And it, it, we were dragged out by the local rescue uh, people who were sent there by Mercedes. And they did a brilliant job of engineering a sort of a three-way wire involving a Chevrolet Blazer pickup and, and it just went pop. Oh, my God, that was beautiful and brilliant. Um, uh, uh, but the worst one ever, as someone's mentioned here on the uh, uh, on the, the, the chat line, the live chat. Chat line. The chat line. Chat line. <laughs> that um, uh, I had a, a, a Nissan Leaf, which I took to North Wales, parked in a, in a hotel to charge it overnight where they had a charging point and stayed at a French house, kind of next door to the hotel. And in the morning, the manager came knocking on the door. Uh, Gareth, what? Um, bin lorry's reversed into your car. It was classic early morning bin lorry. Right, keep coming. Reverse. That's someone waving them in. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Crunch. Stop. <laughs> I just... They, it was in the days where you didn't often get electric cars on charging points and these guys were emptying the bins there every morning for years and weren't expecting to see a car on a charging point so totaled it, practically wrote it off. That was embarrassing. That was one of the Magic. worst Magic. moments. Worst moments. Best moments? Uh, I'll tell you in a moment. Okay, got a best best moment. Uh, Ten seconds on the best moment. Uh, Zog. Uh, I mean... I, I, one of my favourite uh, favourite moments uh, actually was you with Hecky Kobalainen <laughs> riding along with Hecky Kobalainen. That was, that, was, uh, that was fantastic. I mean, you know, I wasn't there in person, but in terms of you know uh, content and uh, what it made for the show, I thought that was terrific. And we sang the Finnish national anthem together. I promised him that if he'd get me up the hill safely, he drove me up the hill at Goodwood, and I, I promised I'd sing, Oi, ma, me, so me, sin, me, ma, soi, san, a cool tie, I won't sing the whole thing, but I oh, love the Finnish national anthem. <laughs> uh, Sarah, favourite moment on the show? I think you've asked me that. Did I, I said the, uh, the, the hoodie from Daniel Ricardo. The Christmas the show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're going, yep, yep. Good. Well, there'll be plenty more favourite moments, I promise you. Richard, you got a favourite single moment? Um, oh, I'd, 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 I'd like doing that 10 years uh, show. I, it was very it was very nice to meet some listeners and uh, to have uh, 
all of us up on stage and to invite uh, yeah. Lumsden and Alex up there and it was just it was always just a lovely evening you know with very I uh, you you know we do something like this and you you kind of have this vague awareness that people are listening you hope but you don't actually see their faces and when we did that live show we got to see their faces and their faces were nice yeah. um so yeah that was well, I, I still have very fond memories of that well I yeah, think that was we a should... great evening when lockdown's over and um, it's possible to hang out with people, I think we'll do something like that again at some point, I hope. My favourite moment relates to 10 years on speed. I mean, it wasn't actually uh, the gig itself. That was fantastic. But I remember the rehearsals. We have one day's rehearsal with the band beforehand. We put this band of nine people together. And in the morning, we rehearsed the guitar, bass and drums. And we added uh, the keyboards, you, Zog and Steve Allen. And then Richard came in to do some vocals. And we got Melissa and Anna to come in and do the backing vocals. And we did a song. And the song just sort of took off because I've always played pretty much all the instruments on the songs myself and my messy playing, I fudge through. But to hear this crack band, Freddie Draper on drums, Eric Boitier on, sorry, Freddie Draper on bass, Eric Boitier on drums, he's great performers. Eddie McDonald from The Alarm on yeah, guitar. And the girl singing, and the whole song with Steve Allen on keyboards just lifted it to a level. And I remember in rehearsals, they just sang one note, and floods of tears. That was that was the greatest moment for me, my realisation I could be in a rock and roll band after all. Okay, let's wrap this up, guys. It's nearly an hour and three quarters. And I said we'd do an hour and a half. Sorry about that. Uh, apologies if we didn't get your questions in, but I think we'll come back to this on a future episode of Gareth Jones on Speed. I'll try and... Uh, answer everything on here someone saying their favorite moment was you two ribbing me about the ford fusion okay have you got drinks there guys <laughs> i do I yeah one. i'm gonna go and get my drink hold on no i didn't <laughs> i forgot are you doing um, dry october or sober right. October? Um, um, I mean, just... i wasn't i did sober september and now it's sober october so i feel like i've got to keep on rolling with my sobriety <laughs> because... really? i um i've been trying uh, to decide yeah. what the most appropriate thing to toast on speed would be is it uh a bottle of uh, martini that's a sort of good go. motorsport drink, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, or might it be uh, Kingfisher, which, uh, of course, uh, paid for the uh, Force India team for many years. Is it going to be that? Maybe not. Um, it ain't going to be that one, is it? That's that's uh, Nobody drinks that Corona. anymore. Corona, no. Uh, or perhaps I should choose the classic Welsh drink, Dragon Stout. Although that looks more like a Chinese dragon to me than a Welsh one, and uh, I think the it... kingfisher, the kingfisher is probably the most drinkable so far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, or how about a bottle of uh, DDA Peroni? I know he's Peroni, but close enough for rock and roll. That might be appropriate. But I think the 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 best possible drink to have today to celebrate this is is probably this Red a Bull. Red Bull. Yeah, there you go. what on earth are that. Red Bull going to do without their Honda engines in two years? I'm not going to get an answer. I was answer. going to say, I'd drink that, Gareth, because it will have no power soon. So. Very good. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, uh, we won't answer that question now, what Red Bull are going to do, because yeah. that is going to be one of the myriad number of topics in motorsport, road cars, and probably James Bond and all the other daft things that we talk about in a future episode of Gareth Jones on Speed. Just because we've reached episode 400 Absolutely. doesn't mean that it's over. There still may be another three or four episodes in this series. Who knows? But uh, for the moment, charge your glasses. You, if you're at home right I've now and you've got a drink... I've got a glass. Charge. I don't think it's as good as what uh, Zog's drinking tonight. <laughs> raise, raise your glasses, please, to the webcam. I'll, I'll enjoy it on your behalf, Sarah. I'll, I, uh, I, I, I don't have a glass. I forgot. I, I was you can do an imaginary of, one. Um, That'll do. British motorways. <laughs> and uh, cheers, guys. Cheers. Well, cheers. cheers to you all. And cheers, cheers to cheers. Uh, all of the lovely listeners. Who've, I know. Uh, I love reading tonight. the comments. Yes. Thank you, everyone. It's been... Thank uh, you. It's been almost as good as seeing your actual faces live, um, yeah. seeing your comments in a little sidebar. So, um, yeah. to uh, the, yeah. uh, the future of thank Gareth Jones on Speed, and thank you everyone for your support over the years, not least of all Violet Berlin, who lets me take over the living room 
um, every two weeks to make a programme. Thank you very much indeed. Sarah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And actually, thank you for the listeners as well. Um, I've enjoyed being part of it. So okay. thumbs There's up from me. More to come. Richard, thank you. Thank you, sir. Zog, thank you and your daft ideas. We're still here doing well, it. Thank all you guys. Love you all. And uh, yeah, let's keep on keeping on. Yeah. Cheers. This has been Gareth Jones on Speed, episode 400 live. She was Sarah. Bye-bye. He was Zog. Goodbye. He was Richard. Bye, everyone. Um, I was Gareth, and uh, we'll see you for the uh, next On Speed. Thank you so much for listening to our prattle. Send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site, follow us on Twitter, or to find out about sponsorship opportunities, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. <laughs>